Good morning. And Good morning. morning. Welcome to Community Presbyterian Church in Van Atten on this beautiful late spring day. I have a few announcements. Uh, I have a few props. <laughs> Mary has been handling, handing these bags out with a list of items that are needed uh, for North Hills Community Outreach. Item, household items that aren't really part of the SNAP benefits, so people can't get them uh, with food stamps. So if you would pick, uh, if you haven't gotten one of these bags, if you pick it up and, and bring the items in, there's two things to remember. One, this is by Mary to remember to do this. There's another thing I learned this morning about remembering, which is once you do do this, you need to bring it in and not let it, <laughs> not let it sit in the mudroom. The second item is uh, a couple weeks ago, folks put together these blessing bags. And we still have probably about 10 or 12 bags in the narthex, or not in the narthex, but in the Ross Draver entrance. If you would please pick them up and hand them out to people in need. And as Susan said, if, if you're so inclined, if you put money up on the clear part, it'll make the bag even more exciting for, for those in need. Uh, on June 10th, in two weeks, uh, uh, on a Saturday, uh, building on the, the great success we had with the Faith in Action, like in March, I think, uh, the property committee is, uh, is asking for your help uh, working on the outside of the building. Uh, from 9 a.m. until 1, there will be a handful of projects. The projects, you don't have to have any unique skills, but if you do, please come. And if you have unique skills and tools, you can bring them too, and we'll figure out what to do. But um, it made a huge difference on the inside of the church, and I, th I know it'll make a huge difference on the outside. Uh, let's see. As another reminder, on June 11th, two weeks from today, we will be meeting at 10 a.m. in Fellowship Hall. So that's two items, change of time and change of location. So uh, we'll, we'll mention that several times between now and the, uh, and the 11th. Uh, the, the last item is, it, being a Matthew 25 church, we, uh, we're going to try to, we're going to support the Pride Parade next Saturday. So there are many folks from the congregation who are meeting here around 10 o'clock to head down to the parade. If you have any questions, talk to Cassie and she will, uh, she will update you with more accurate information than I have. Did I miss anything? So let us begin. Good morning, I just have a brief word um, in song from the deacons looking ahead to the picnic next week. Roll out those lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. Those days of cold drinks and good eats are near. Roll out those lazy, crazy, hazy days of summer. On June 4th, celebrate with friends at church right here. Dig out your favorite recipes, a salad or side, or cool dessert that's really sweet. We pray for cool yet lovely sunshine in a blue sky, and we'll have tents so that the weather can't compete. Roll out those lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. Our day of lemonade and fried chicken is near. Roll out those lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. You'll wish that summer could always be here. You'll wish that summer could always be here. You'll wish that summer could always be here. We still have sign-up items, and I can see you in the narthex afterwards.
Friends, would you please stand in body or in spirit and join me in the call to worship. We worship a creative God who formed all living things. We worship an abundant God who gives each of us different gifts. We worship a glorious God who is seen in the vast array of creation. Alleluia. Let us worship God. Jenny and Karis, I'm going to get started, okay? So what did I give you here? Scars. Scars. And what do they do? They wave. All right, don't throw them too, too high because there's fire behind you, Ava. <laughs> Even though we do talk about fire on Pentecost, we don't want to start one in the church. So if we throw it up gently, what, what happens? 
Does it fly down? Yes. Yes? So when we talk about today on Pentecost, we talk about the Holy Spirit. Do you all, have you heard the term Holy Spirit? You, we heard, we talk about the Holy Spirit all the time. In baptism, you're right, we talk. Yeah, the Son, God, God, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we talk about the Holy Spirit a lot, but today is the day that we celebrate specifically the Holy Spirit. And one of the ways that we think about the Holy Spirit is with wind, and with air, and fire, and with the color red. If you look around, you'll see everybody wearing the color red. Genevieve. But what is one of the things that we've been doing downstairs? Have we been learning a different language downstairs too? Yeah? So we've been learning a different language because another way that we celebrate the Holy Spirit, which is one of the big parts of Pentecost, is learning how to speak with other Christians and other people in the world. So we're <coughs> gonna talk about the words that we learned downstairs. Ginny. And Karis, do you all remember what the word for community was that we learned downstairs? Do you remember? What was it? Close. C close. Koinonia. Good job. Do you remember how important that word was? Yeah? How important was that word? Yeah, it's, it, it means big to the whole world, big to all of the community. And on Pentecost, it's so important to remember that the Holy Spirit came down for all of the community with language and with fire and with air and all of those very special things. So everybody, if you want to take your scarves and if you want to take all of your toys, let's put our toys back in the basket and we'll head on downstairs and we'll talk a lot more about it, okay? All of the scarves will go in those baskets, okay? Ginny, grab your scarf. Friends, as we come into this time of confession, we know that we have been gifted with the Holy Spirit, which comes to us in words and in music and in wind and in fire. But so often we turn away from the Spirit's call and think we have a better idea, and that is called sin. And we have it. We're human. So we come together to ask God to forgive us the ways in which we have turned away. Let us pray. <coughs> Infinite God, you come, you come to us in many colors, colors shapes, shapes, and languages. You speak, you speak to each of us in a way we can understand. You reach, you reach out to us and meet us where we are. But we are quick to limit you to what we can understand and control. Forgive us and set your spirit loose among us. Challenge us, surprise us, and open us to your power, that we might know you more deeply, follow you more faithfully, and love more fully. Friends, scripture is clear. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God draws us together, offering salvation, forgiveness, and new life to all. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.
Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Okay. Open, Open our, our hearts and minds by the power of your Spirit, Holy God, that we might hear and receive the message you intended for us today. Amen. Today's uh, scripture reading from the uh, Hebrew scriptures is out of numbers. And, Bob, can you put the mic up a little more for you? Okay. Is that better? Yes. yes. I can hear myself. That's not always good. Today's scripture is from Numbers, which is somewhat uncommon. It's part of the Torah. And in this part of Numbers, the, uh, the author is sort of repeating much of the story of Exodus. And, and prior to the scripture that I'm about to read, the, uh, there was a small group of, uh, of folks as they're wandering in the desert that are complaining and helping the others to understand just how miserable they want to be. Um, they're, they're looking for meat, they're tired of manna, and let's move on with this whole thing. And the whole context of the story is be careful what you ask for. But uh, so, so with that, Moses goes to God, and Moses does what, what has become pretty commonplace now. Moses complains to God about these people are killing me, what am I gonna do? So God gives him some advice and asks him to do some things, and that's where we end up with the scripture. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke with him, and he took some of the power of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied but they did not do so again. However, two men, whose name were Eldad and Medad, had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but didn't go out to the tent. Yet the spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put the, his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. The, the word of God for the people, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Thank you, Ray, for filling in for Tim this week. Great winter, folks. Our second reading of scripture is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Again, one of those scriptures you have probably heard often and probably on Pentecost, because it is about Pentecost. But uh, listen and hear what the Spirit might be saying to you today. May the Spirit fall afresh on us. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, in heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue and of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us begin with prayer. Holy God, we hear this story and we may feel shaken, we may feel disbelieving. We may feel just confused, as confused as those in the upper room must have felt. God, pour your spirit upon us this day that we may hear your word to us in a new way so that we may serve you always. In Christ we pray. Amen. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but prophets, are portrayed as pretty unusual people in scripture. Actually, I think unusual is a generous way of describing these rabble rousers. Biblical prophets are the kind of people you'd invite to dinner 
And once you get them out the door, you swear you're never inviting them again. <laughs> because prophets are difficult people. Prophets are weirdos. Prophets do not hedge their bets, and prophets do not watch their tone. The prophet Jeremiah showed a clay pot to a crowd of Judeans and told them that the pot represented Judah. Then he smashed the pot into tiny ragged shards. Although Jeremiah got his point across, I'm sure he alienated more than a few Judeans. The prophet Ezekiel, he ate a copy of the Bible, which is a very weird thing to do, right? <laughs> Although to be fair, in Ezekiel's time, the Bible only included the first five books of the Old Testament. <laughs> Still, very weird way to encourage people to take their scriptures seriously. The prophet Amos, you know him, he told the Israelites that their solemn ceremonies and stained glass and committee meetings didn't impress God in the least. What God wanted was justice and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The prophets in scripture are simply people who are so filled with the Holy Spirit they cannot contain themselves. Prophets so love God and God's people, they can't keep it to themselves. Prophets are the kind of people who see the world not as it is, but as God intends it to be. And prophets will bother and push and cajole and get on our nerves until we're ready to throw them in the cistern, that's what happened to Jeremiah, or push them off a cliff like the people in Jesus' home church wanted to do. Remember that first sermon? Jesus ticked them off by quoting that sometimes troublesome prophet Isaiah. The personalities of the prophets are supersized, as supersized as the Holy Spirit herself. The other thing to notice about biblical prophets is not a single one of them ever applied for that job. <laughs> Every single prophet is plucked up by God and set on a path they wouldn't have chosen for themselves in a million years. That's certainly the case of Moses, who appeared in our text from Numbers. To put it mildly, Moses is a reluctant prophet. Moses is minding his own business, tending sheep and goats, when God sets a bush on fire and starts yelling at Moses to pay attention. And Moses, as you recall, tells God he is absolutely the last person God should send to talk to Pharaoh. And, as you recall, God tells Moses that God's got a plan, and don't worry, it will all go great. And today's story in Numbers is what happens after the Israelites have left Egypt behind. And God's plan to get the people out of Egypt really did go great, but Moses still really hates his job. <laughs> and just as an aside, if you've ever been disenchanted, bored, or impatient with church work or with fellow church members, Moses would be entirely sympathetic to you. <laughs> the people Moses has been entrusted to lead are getting antsy. They are sick of manna. They are sick of Moses. They are sick of this whole misbegotten adventure. And Moses is sick of dealing with these people. Moses says to God, what did I ever do to you to deserve this? I'm done. If this is the way it's going to be, you might as well just kill me now. So God tells Moses to gather 70 elders in the meeting tent. And God takes some of the Holy Spirit that was in Moses and shares it with the elders. And suddenly those 70 elders begin to prophesy with the same power that God placed on Moses. Meanwhile, outside the tent, Eldad and Medad are also filled with the Holy Spirit, and they begin to speak prophetically to the Israelites. The Spirit of God finds them too, even outside the tent. 
Outside that inner circle, the spirit finds her way, giving the people around Moses that same power to maybe help him out a little bit in his leadership. Now Joshua finds this situation quite out of order, but Moses says, oh, I wish all of God's people shared in this spirit. I wish everyone could see burning bushes everywhere. This scene in Numbers is sort of a Pentecost before Pentecost. The spirit does what the spirit's gonna do. And the spirit's power is beyond our control because the spirit's power is the very power of God. So today's Pentecost, it marks the completion of the Easter season, which began two months ago. And last week, remember, Jesus ascended into heaven. And after he was gone, his followers are left hanging. In our text today in Acts 2, they are waiting and praying, waiting for the promised arrival of the Holy Spirit, whatever that may mean. And if you look at Acts 1, 15 to 26, right before this text, you'll discover that in addition to waiting and praying, they also had a business meeting to elect Matthias as a replacement for Judas. Now that is very Presbyterian of them, isn't it? <laughs> if you're waiting around for the Holy Spirit to show up, you might as well have a session meeting to find a new elder and finish out someone's term, am I right? Nominating committee, take heart. <coughs> Whatever the disciples were expecting from the advocate that Jesus promised to them, we can be pretty sure they weren't expecting this crazy mix of wind, and fire, and flames descending. They didn't expect this chaos that, at least in the book of Acts, looks an awful lot like a frat party. What the very early church had on their hands was a mess, a holy mess, a Holy Spirit mess. And every time I preach on the Holy Spirit or preach on Pentecost Sunday, I can't help but observe that the Holy Spirit is somewhat mysterious for many Presbyterians. We don't speak in tongues very often. <laughs> We don't often feel the fire of holy discontent, and if we do, we're hesitant to let what we're feeling show. The thought of a supersized Holy Spirit can make some of us a little nervous. But I hate to break it to you. When you and I were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we received the full package. Not A, not B, not C, but all of the above. You received the supersized power of the Holy Spirit in your baptism, and it is renewed in you day by day. You didn't ask for it. You may not always be aware that it is with you. There may not be fire or flames or wind knocking you off your feet. And it could be that the spirit for you may just be a still small voice that whispers in a breeze. But the spirit's breath is what moves us through our life in faith. You and I were claimed by God in the name of Jesus, baptized by the Holy Spirit and set on a path we may or may not have chosen. But it is the spirit that leads us right here and here we are. The Spirit did that. It led you here week by week, Sunday by Sunday, called by God. You are not a lonely prophet on this journey. Just as Moses was not the only prophet among the Israelites, we share that Spirit with one another so we can dream and wonder and even prophesy. 
And if this text from Numbers is to be trusted, the Spirit is present even in, the, even in those outside the walls of this church. This is good news indeed. That means we can call upon the supersized power of the Holy Spirit to bring peace to places like Sudan and Ukraine. And even here in our own city, even at Pittsburgh Oliver High School, where a student was shot and killed on Wednesday. We can call upon the supersized Holy Spirit to stir us up and give us the courage to speak out wherever we witness injustice. We can call upon the supersized Holy Spirit to inspire each one of us to live into and embody our spirit-given gifts. We can trust the Holy Spirit to give us prophetic words to encourage one another and inspire one another. My friends, let us be people who are so filled with the Holy Spirit we cannot contain ourselves. Let us be a people who so love God and so love God's people and God's good creation that we cannot keep that love a secret. May it be so. Amen.
Friends, let us pray. Lord God, until there is war no more, and you wipe every tear from every eye, we will remember. We will remember those who have served and died for the sake of something greater than themselves. We will remember and give thanks for the men and women who knowingly put themselves in harm's way so that others might be safer. And we will remember the families who grieve this day and every day for brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, daughters and sons, friends and spouses who lost their lives while wearing the uniform of our country. Lord God, until you beat swords into plowshares and the ox and lamb lie down together, we will remember. We will remember that peace doesn't happen without peacemakers. And violence won't cease unless we stand in the breach and begin to repair it. We will remember that war is costly. The price paid in priceless lives cut short. Lord God, until the Prince of Peace returns and death and crying are no more, we will remember. We will remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice in service of their country. We will support those left bereft in their absence. We will remember to seek reconciliation, knowing that while we cannot control the ways of the world, we can seek to work for peace in our own lives and communities. Lord God, until there is no need for men and women to place themselves in harm's way, we will remember and give thanks for those who did and died. We lift these prayers today, O oh God, and the prayers for all who are facing illness, suffering, loneliness, and death. We lift them to you, O oh God, in the name of the one who grants us the peace that passes understanding, we pray, as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, out of the great abundance that God has entrusted with us, let us return to God our tithes and offerings.
You have blessed each of us with gifts to serve and share, most generous God. May the offerings we present today be used to further build your beloved community. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship and the fellowship of that ornery Holy Spirit be with you this day and even unto ages. Amen. 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 